God bless you. Welcome to Golden Triangle Church on the Rock. We're so glad that you are here with us this morning. It's a great day to be in church, Melinda. It is. It, it's great. And we've had great worship. And I know that we're ready to hear a great word from Pastor Ron. I just want to take the time to welcome those of you on campus and also those of you watching online or joining. I, I don't like to say watching because you're joining us. We're one big congregation just here locally and all around the world. If you're watching us on, or joining, I keep saying watching, joining us on Facebook or YouTube, I want to encourage you to comment where you're joining from this morning. And those of you, us on campus, you can put Pull out your phones at this time and go to our Facebook page, go to our YouTube. It's Golden Triangle Church on the Rock, and you'll pull up the live stream. You can share that on your Facebook feed, and I want you to go ahead and comment and welcome those of us who, those who are joining us online this morning. Um, and I want to encourage you to connect with us. There is a connect card on the seat backs in front of you. If this is your first time here, or maybe your second or third, or maybe you've just never filled one out before, I want to encourage you to take the time to fill that out right now. That's just a way for us to get to know you, a way for you to get to know more about us and about our church. And if you want to get plugged in in any way, that is the first step in doing that is filling out that connect card. If you are online, you can go to cotr.com, scroll until you find connect with us and you can fill in your information there as well. You'll also find a spot for a prayer request uh, form on the seat backs in front of you and also online. If you are in need of prayer for any reason, whether it's personally for you or somebody that you know, maybe something that is on your heart or just dear to your heart and you just wanna lift it up in prayer and you want people to join with you in prayer, please take the time to fill that out. Our staff and our elders uh, take it very seriously and they pray over every need, specifically by name. So whatever's on your heart, please fill that out and let us pray with you. Amen. Thank you, Melinda. Y'all give it up for my wonderful wife. Thank you, buddy. I was talking to him, not my wife. Uh, well, listen, it's good to see everyone this morning, and uh, we're going to continue our time in worship through our giving, and I'm going to share a scripture here uh, from Exodus, and um, you, uh, uh, Exodus 35, verse 22, it says this, all who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewelry of all kinds, breeches, earrings, rings, and ornaments, and they all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. What's interesting, what's happening here is, uh, is, they're, is they're beginning to build the, the tabernacle, and uh, God wanted Moses to present this opportunity to the people of Israel to participate and being a part of building the tabernacle. And as you see there, it shows that people began to grab, you know, they were, you know, if you keep reading, people were taking off rings, they were taking off earrings, they were taking off things to bring before the Lord because they wanted to participate in what God was doing. I mean, this was a new day for them. And, you know, they came out of Egypt and they're in a new day. They wanted to be a part. And that's what I love about, uh, you know, giving and what we do in our church. You know, we are doing so many things in our community and around the world, uh, whether it be in Kenya, you know, through our child sponsorship and, and uh, the people that we're reaching in Gyoto and the school and everything we're doing there or India or, uh, you know, we can keep going naming all the places and all the things that we are doing and also here in our very, here also in our church for our children, for our youth, all the things that we're doing, it's an opportunity for us to participate with God. That's what giving comes down to, is an opportunity for us to participate. And I wanna thank you for participating, for being involved and being a part of what God is doing around the world, around the world, excuse me, and in our community and here in our church. You know, we are making a difference. You're making a difference everywhere in so many different places and in people's lives. I wanna thank you for that. And uh, just know that what you do today is going to continue to reach the world beyond our lifetime, amen? God bless you and thank you for your giving. There are many ways that you can give a very simple way is through our QR code that you can find on the screen behind me. And also you can find on the seat backs in front of you. You can use uh, uh, your phone, uh, the camera on your phone to, um, to just hover over that QR code and it'll provide a link. You can click on that and it'll bring you to our link tree. Uh, uh, different links for different uses, but one of those is for giving. So, um, and also if you're online, uh, if you're watching online, excuse me, then you can, 
uh, go to our website at cotr.com and uh, you can click on giving there as well. If you have what you're going to give, let's go ahead and uh, pray for it as we look to participate with God again uh, to continue to reach the world. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for the opportunity, God, to be a part of what you are doing around the world. And Lord, I pray, God, that as we bring our offering to you today, God, God, I thank you, God, that you are giving us a chance, God, to be a part, Lord, God, of the work of you are, God, that you are doing around the world and in our community, God. I pray that you would take what we have to give, bless it, and use it, and multiply it. And Lord, I pray for your people, God, I pray you would bless your people today, God, and meet every need. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. God bless you as you give. Ushers, you can come and receive the offering. And let's take a look at video announcements. God bless you. Good morning and welcome to Golden Triangle Church on the Rock. We have so many exciting things happening this week and here at Just a Few. Connect groups are next Sunday all around Golden Triangle. You can pick up a flyer in the main foyer at our Connect station. There are groups available from nursery age through 12th grade here at church. So drop off your kids and have a great time connecting with your group. Our Bible readings on Monday with Pastor Ron are going great. Pastor Ron will be out of town and we will not meet tomorrow, February 19th or Monday the 26th. We will resume March 4th and continue reading through the book of John during the lunch hour from 12 to 1 p.m. in the Education Building, Room 2. Mark your calendar and get ready to meet again March 4th. It's that time of year to start signing up for summer camps. Parents, if you have a student in second grade to a senior in high school, stop by the information desk and sign up your child and get more details on all our camps. Time change is March 10th, and we will have one combined 10.30 a.m. service. So let's bring forward and have some breakfast tacos from 10.30 a.m. till 11. So come early and come hungry to enjoy this time of fellowship as our veterans group prepares breakfast for us on this sleep-in Sunday. Pick up our first quarter flyer in the foyer. See what projects we are funding during our first quarter locally and around the world. And as always, thank you for giving to these projects. That's it for this week's announcements. Don't forget to make a living, make a life, and make a difference. All right, y'all give it up if you would for Elahor. Didn't she do wonderful? Wow, did great. Thank all of you so much who participate all through the week to make sure that our church reaches the greatest number of people that we can. Uh, let me ask a question. Is our internet still out? It is out. So we are actually recording because, uh, you know, can you imagine what it was like? Oh, we're online? Oh, never mind. Okay, so you are with us. This morning early, we were told that AT&T was was down coming this direction and so uh, I was left earlier with the last word that it was out and it made me start thinking how uh, how whenever you know we went from outdoor toilets to indoor toilets you know can you imagine what would happen when you showed up at a play or the theater or some other community event or a church and the water was not on after you had already, you know, uh, uh, gotten rid of your outdoor toilet. Can, can, can you imagine? I mean, can you imagine today if, if Beaumont turned off the water, we probably would not be having church in here. Some of the modern conveniences that we, that we enjoy and embrace, like electricity, uh, you know, can you imagine what happened after everyone converted to electricity? And then, you know, give it three weeks, a month, two months, and you show up and no electricity. And wait, we just got rid of our lamps. You know, wait, we just got rid of our fans. We just got rid of whatever. Uh, you know, modern conveniences make it a whole lot easier to enjoy life. And I am glad that we have modern conveniences. Um, uh, you know, we got rid of our toilet about, uh, our outdoor toilet about six years ago. You know, we finally got comfortable with actually, you know, 
So, uh, but uh, I, I was going to make an apology to our online congregation that they were having to connect with us later than normal. But since you're already connected, we're going to get to the word here in a moment. Uh, but before we get to the word, you know, I like impromptu testimonies. And so, Hetty Brown, could I get you to come up here, Hetty? Come, come, come on down, Hetty Brown. Come on down. Uh, thank you, Pastor Ken. Oh, Hetty, you don't know how difficult it was this morning for me not to tell you earlier that I was going to, to, to ask you to come up and share a testimony. Oh, come on, sweetheart. Yeah, you want to uh, let me uh, step down. Come on over here in the middle so that we can uh, uh, catch you on camera. And tell us what, huh? You're going to cry. You know, Hetty, when I first became pastor here, uh, this is my 36th uh, February here. 36 so years. So you're 37? Yeah, you're, you're going to have to hold it up and almost eat it, sweetheart. And, uh, but uh, you have been one of the, if not the most faithful church member and minister and prayer warrior that, that, that I have ever seen and enjoyed the privilege of pastoring. But uh, give us a testimony. Tell, tell me something. You were on fire this morning as we were talking. Yes, because my husband and I, we were actually, I, I was, we were, I was actually crying all the way to, to church because of a testimony that I heard and then how we related it to us personally. And this morning before church, as we were getting, getting ready, I was listening to a church service out of Beaumont, and this minister was saying how he was in line at Market Basket, and there was a lady in front of him with her basket was just full of food, and he began to talk about the meat, and, the, and it was just flowing over, you know, and how, how you all are on a, in a line when you're trying to get out of the, the store, and there's a person in front of you that just has, have, has everything in their basket, and so as she was taking everything out, she began to cry. And she just kept crying and crying and crying. And then all of a sudden she just started boohooing, just taking meat and food and putting it out. And, the, and, the, and all of a sudden the lady that was checking her out just stopped and, and asked her. And she said, well, what's the problem? You can't pay for the food? She said, no, I can pay for it. What you don't understand is I used to pay for it with a loan star card. <laughs> and now I can pay for it myself. And she said, I'm just standing here <laughs> praising God and thanking him that I can pay for my groceries myself. And my husband and I would begin to talk about that. And we were, we were saying how we went through storms. We, you know, we, lo we lost our home twice. And we went through storms and how difficult it was. We, going through those storms, but how we attacked each day, one day at a time and one day at a time. And there was members here that came here, and you don't know this, but they would give me $100 in my hand. You know, things like that. And, and coming out of the storm has been so much better than the way we went when we went in, went in the storm. Amen. And, and I could just tell you the favors over the years that we have experienced between him and I, you know, and, and I thank God. And, and it's just, it just makes you just, and when I heard that testimony of that girl, I said, I know how you feel. I know how you feel, honey. I know how you feel when God just brings you out. And, and my last word is, if you don't know Jesus, for whatever reason you, you don't know him yet, this verse that I, that I woke up with this morning because I always pray for my family and I always pray for my kids and my, and my grandkids. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Amen. Nor their seed Amen. begging for bread. Amen. And so if you have no other reason to live for the Lord, live for your children, for your grandchildren, because you don't want ever to see them begging for bread. Amen. 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 We aren't crying today. Today we aren't crying because we don't have. We're crying because we do have. Amen. 
Amen. We do have. We do have. I love you. I love you too. I've known him for years, for years since I was here when he came. So that's been a long time. That's been a long time. I love you. Amen, Brenda. Love you, Brenda. God bless you. Uh, LC, you are a blessed man. Stand up, LC. Let everybody uh, congratulate this man for having the good sense to marry such a good woman. Uh, all right. Wow. What, what good stuff, huh? Hey, we have some people in our church that we're needing to pray for. You know, uh, you probably have some people on your heart, but there are people that are going through, you know, uh, difficulties and going through moments, some in the hospital, some recovering from hospital situations. Uh, you know, um, uh, Pastor Vaughn is doing better. He's at home recovering. Don uh, also uh, uh, is, is uh, Don Terrell, he is uh, recovering. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just need a little extra energy in recovering. And uh, also, uh, you know, Janice Parks is about to have some surgery as well. And, uh, you know, just all kinds of different uh, people on your heart, on our heart, people here with us, people uh, there perhaps in your family, your friends. Um, let's, let's just uh, take a moment to this great God that we have, to this wonderful God. You know, we have a right to petition. We have a right to make requests. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Uh, but our right, our abilities and, and, and the assistance that we are provided from heaven, it makes a difference. And it makes a difference that we ask. The Bible uh, in, encourages us to ask. So let's ask right now. Uh, you ask for those you know in need, and, and we will pray as well. Father, Lord, right now we take time in our service, Lord, to lift up our prayer request to you. Those, Lord, that we know that are in need, God, of just a little extra help recovering, Lord, and, and God, uh, getting over uh, uh, and, and through loss and grief and hurt, Lord, and, and uh, surgeries, Lord, and uh, uh, infirmities, God, uh, people who are needing touched right now, Lord, uh, who, are, who are at home, who are watching, Lord, who who this morning, Lord, are unable, Father, Lord, to even get out of bed, Lord. We pray for those, Lord, with upcoming uh, surgeries, Lord, and, and situations in life, Lord, that they just need help from, Lord. could be financial. It could be, Lord, physical, God. Lord, we pray, Lord, relationships, God. Heal and mend, Lord. Help, sir, as we call out to you, sir, Lord. Thank you for your hand of blessing, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, Lord, for angels on assignment that are sent out from heaven, Lord, to minister for those who will be heirs of salvation. We pray blessings, Lord, and healing and grace and help, Lord, strength and hope, Lord, joy and peace, God. Lord, uh, bring it about, Lord. Hear it, Lord, in our community, Lord, in communities, Lord, like ours around the world, Lord. Meet needs through us, God, those that you are called to meet, Lord, uh, through us, God, Lord, uh, th those of you called us to meet, God, Lord, uh, help us, God, to meet those, we pray, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen and amen. Well, are you ready for the word? Yeah. Open up your Bibles to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, you'll find it uh, toward the back of your New Testament. James, Peter, and John, before you get to the book of Revelation. Uh, and uh, you'll find uh, Peter. 1 Peter, we're going to chapter 5 this morning. And the title of the message today is... Why do we suffer? Uh, Sherry, it sure is good to see you and your family here. God bless you guys. And uh, this is Pastor Ken's daughter. If you don't know Sherry, Sherry is a part of uh, a church over in the Houston area. Is that correct? That general big area? San Antonio. Oh, okay. I, I remember now. And uh, <laughs> gosh, time flies. And, uh, and she is a part of a church there and uh, part of the ministry there. So glad you're here. God bless you. Uh, we'll have to get you to come and, and sing for us at some point. I know you are blessed by God. Sherry was a part of our uh, missions uh, work here and uh, did missions and then uh, went and did missions on her own and got married to a great guy in our church. And is he still flying around the world, flying around the nation? Yeah, and tell him, I said, hey, I envy him a little bit. You know, he's, uh, he's, he got to do commercial piloting, and I just get to fly around in, in the patch here is what we call it. And, uh, but uh, tell him I said hello. 
uh, also to let you know that our Port Arthur Church, Church on the Rock in Port Arthur, Iglesia Sobre La Roca, they have secured a building on Lewis down in Port Arthur. If you were to go down Twin City Highway, for those of you that know Southeast Texas or are a part of this community, if you were to go to Twin City Highway, cross over Gulfway going south, you would find yourself on Stadium. Well, about, uh, about one or two red lights, you'll find Lewis Street crossing. Take a ride on Lewis, and they're down there about, oh, five or six blocks. Did it used to be uh, the, the, the North End Baptist Church? Okay. But they have secured that building there, and they will be having their first service in that building, Pastor Robert and Monica, the first service in that building on March the 3rd. And so, you know, yeah, hey, y'all give them a hand. It's wonderful that they're, they have been meeting. They have been meeting there in our food bank for a number of months, and, and now they'll be there uh, on Lewis. So if you get an opportunity to go and visit, those of you here in southeast Texas or if you're ever in this area uh, to visit them, or if you as a family get a chance to go and visit, um, uh, please do. Uh, they are just wonderful. They're having such a great time. They're impacting the community, really reaching um, uh, um, and meeting a great need there in that community. I'm very, very proud of them, as we are of all of our churches, from Cowboy Church and, you know, the Vider Church on the Rock and, uh, you know, all, all of the churches. Uh, I won't name them all in case I forget one, but uh, you know who you are. I love you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Okay. Have you found First Peter chapter 5? First Peter chapter 5, and the title of our message again is, Why Do We Suffer? Let's begin reading First Peter 5. We'll read a couple of verses to begin with, and then we'll close with a couple of more verses. So you could uh, you know, hold your finger or, or you know, just uh, set, set your phone aside or something for a moment, because we'll be coming back here. And First uh, Peter 5, the apostle Peter is writing, and he encourages us in verse 8 to be sober. To, to, to think sober-mindedly, to keep ourselves thinking correctly, and, 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 and uh, um, you know, to know what's going on, to not be confused, to not have fuzzy thinking, but to, 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 to be sober and to be vigilant, to be watchful, always be sober, be watchful. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9, resist him. Boy, what a great word. You know, resist him. Don't give in to the devil. Don't let him trick you, deceive you, because his goal is to devour you. His goal is to destroy you and consume you and devour you. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Keep on holding on to your faith. Steadfast, unmovable. You know, hold on to your faith. Hold on to your trust in God. Hold on to what you believe, knowing we know something. We know that the same sufferings that you're going through, the same difficulties, the same pressures, the same problems, the same infirmities, the same tragedies, the same disappointments, the same sufferings, that you are going through are also being experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Brotherhood meaning others who are born again believers who love Jesus just like you do. They are born again. They're filled with the Spirit. They are in a common relationship, a brotherhood. You are, you are in, in family together. You're in this brotherhood. Resist the devil steadfast in the faith. Every time you suffer, Resist him. Why? Uh, uh, because he's trying to devour you. Don't let him devour you. And also realize that the same things you're going through, other people are experiencing. Other born-again believers are going through those same things. You know, there seems to me to be this brotherhood of sufferers. You know, have you ever noticed? 
It seems to be like a brotherhood of sufferers who, just like their leader, Jesus Christ, the only Son of Almighty God, just like their leader, they are suffering quite a bit in this world. I don't know if you have noticed, but throughout history, it seems as though that the children of God have suffered quite a lot. It seems that they've gone through a lot, and it seems today. Now, perhaps if you could extend your consideration beyond the 5% of the population of the world that you might know as America... Perhaps if you could extend your consideration to India, to China, to, to uh, the African continent, to all of Asia. If you could extend your consideration beyond uh, perhaps your paradigm to realize that in many parts of the world, in North Korea, for example, do you know even in France, it's against the law to stand in a public place and share Jesus Christ. Do you know that? Do you know in France and, and, and other places in Europe, you cannot, there are anti-missionary laws. You cannot witness, you cannot publicly preach the gospel, share the word of God, say that you love Jesus out loud. For fear of being arrested and put in jail, fined, or as in North Korea, your mom and dad will also go to jail and so will your children. Three generations will spend their lifetime in prison doing their best to reprogram your, your family to no longer believe in Jesus Christ. To no longer profess and certainly don't tell anybody about it. Now, if we could extend our considerations into other parts of the world to realize that not everyone enjoys the freedoms that we enjoy, and we here in America also suffer persecutions. But persecutions are not all we suffer. Just like Jesus. Do you know, do you think Jesus never had an injury? Do you think he never had an injury that hurt? You would be wrong because God spent a lot of the word in the New Testament telling us about him receiving stripes on his back. There's an injury for you. How many of us have been beaten with a cat of nine tails? How many of us have had our flesh ripped from our bodies because we believed in almighty God? Because we understood the message of salvation. And because we wanted to tell others that God had a plan for their life. That God cared about them. That God loved them. That God had a special place for them. That he wanted to protect them. That he wanted to save them. That he wanted to secure them and make them feel better. He wanted to give them joy and peace and love for one another and forgiveness. That's the only message Jesus had. And yet he was bruised, beaten, crucified. He was spit upon. He was chastised for our peace. Uh, you know, there seems to be this brotherhood of sufferers. If we could imagine, every one of his followers, disciples, were also martyred for that same good message for, for their intent and for their, their history of sharing the love of God with others. You see, there must be something pretty terrible in this world. If we cannot stand on the streets of Paris and tell someone about the love of Jesus, we might expect it from North Korea. But would we expect it from Russia? Would we expect it from, from much of the other civilized world that people would put you in jail, put you under the jail? It happened to the Apostle Paul. It happened you know, throughout history. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour Resist him. Don't let him control your life. Don't let him tell you what you can and cannot do. Resist him steadfast in the faith. 
Keep trusting God, knowing that the same sufferings that you are subject to, your friends, family, brothers, other believers in Jesus Christ are going through the very same things. In one of my early morning prayer times this past week, I earnestly asked God to help me understand why we suffer. You know, uh, I looked around. I was praying. I had been praying for so many people. And it seemed as though everybody I thought of needed prayer. And it seemed that the people I had thought of, the prayer that I was praying for them was for God to help them through some moment of difficulty, of trial, of tribulation, of testing, of trouble, of disappointment, of hurt, of, of trauma. Or, you know, and, I, and, 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 I, and I finally just stopped. And I said, God, can you help me understand why we suffer? And I told him, I, I said, now, I, I'm not complaining, and, 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 and just give me an answer. I will not be complaintive, and I will not, you know, I will not hold it against you. I don't know how you, but I reverence God. I'm a little afraid of him in that reverential way. I'm not afraid he's going to break my leg or anything, but I am afraid of disappointing him. I am afraid of him, you know, uh, 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 imagining that I don't love him and care about him or trust him. And I know that he knows everything. He has it all in control, and I trust him completely. So I said, would you just help me understand? Would you just give me some kind of understanding uh, as to, as to um, why born-again believers suffer? I asked him, to whose benefit is this? Does this benefit you? I mean, I'm, I didn't say, does this benefit you? You know, I'm earnest. Who does this benefit? Because as far as I can see, there is no benefit to this suffering. As far as I can see, as far as I know, I mean, I, I can't make rhyme or reason out of it, God. I can't understand it. I can't, I don't know what it's good for. Uh, and, and immediately I began to go through scriptures and, and God floods my mind with scriptures when I ask him a question. I, I, I think is, 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 is a wonderful thing if you could take your time reading the Bible, uh, do it every day, please do, because the wealth of the scriptures that, that you take in, the Bible says that in times of need, God will bring those things to remembrance. And he began to flood my mind with verses on suffering. I mean, just really, just, they just went through, you know, from 2 Timothy and Romans 8 and Philippians 3 in 2 Corinthians chapter 15. Do you know that 1 Peter, for example, uh, there's like 15 times or more in 1 Peter that were told about suffering. Wow. It was kind of a big deal. And there's this brotherhood of suffering going on. And, and, and I considered how Jesus suffered. And I considered why did he suffer? Why did Jesus suffer? The Son of God. Because we kind of get this idea that once we are born again, once we are saved, like the Jews, once Messiah comes, we won't have any more trouble. That's why they have a hard time believing that Jesus is Messiah. Because in their understanding that when Messiah came, he was going to deliver them and they would have no more trouble and their enemies couldn't do anything else against them. And so they say, nope, it wasn't Jesus because we still have enemies. We still, you know, sometimes people say, I must not have gotten it. You know, God must not be real. Maybe, maybe my faith doesn't work or maybe God doesn't heal or that maybe God doesn't help because he didn't. Because I'm still stuck in this situation I was stuck in. Or some tragedy unfolded in a way that I did not want it to. I prayed that it would not. And God could have fixed it if he had wanted to. What good is this suffering? That's kind of where I was. And I, I, I earnestly and honestly, you know, God doesn't mind a conversation. He doesn't mind questions, you know. He does not take well to insolence. But he does not mind questions. And so, uh, you know, uh, uh, as I was going through all these scriptures and, and I sat back and just in this spiritual quiet time, I opened my mind to God and it seemed as though that God opened the eyes of my understanding to see this in a way that I had not seen it before. Uh, and uh, I saw that this world and every person born on earth is on a collision course with death and destruction. 
Let me say that again. All of a sudden I realized that this world that we are in, planet Earth, this world, and every person ever born on planet Earth is on a collision course with death and destruction. You can read about it in 2 Peter. You can read about it in the book of Revelation, chapter 21. We are riding on a ship that is destined to sink and kill everyone on board. Hold on, listen. We are on a ship that is destined to sink and kill everyone on board. There will be no survivors. Our only hope is salvation beyond this life. Our only hope is beyond this planet, beyond this world. God sent his only begotten son to open a door for us. God sent his only begotten son into a world that was destined, that was on a collision course with destruction in order to save them out of this world, to open a door into a brand new existence, an opportunity to become a new creation so that we might survive the destruction that is coming upon all of the world. I imagined several things while I was there in my quiet time meditating on on Scripture after Scripture. I imagined, uh, forgive me, but I imagined a, a starship. Like we were speeding through space. And something happened on this starship that, that was a virus beyond fixing, beyond control. And the only way that anyone could make it would be to be transported from that starship to a safe place. You see, the earth has been infiltrated. The earth has been sabotaged. There is an evil spirit We call him the devil, what Peter was talking about. There is an evil spirit that has sabotaged and infiltrated the world. And every system of this world is corrupt. Every system of this world remains compromised. The world is winding down. And one day it will no longer be able to sustain life. The world has been compromised, and God is not going to save it. God is not going to stop the destruction of this world. It is on a collision course. So what he has done is that he has made a way for us to be translated into the kingdom of his dear son. While we are on this earth speeding towards destruction, we are subject to the evils of this world, as was Christ. While we are in this world, we are subject to the hardships and to the sufferings that are in this world, as was our Lord and Savior. It is not that we do not have hope. It is not that we do not have help, that we cannot request assistance. In fact, we are encouraged to request assistance. But we must realize that the same sufferings that we are going through, Almighty God has told us that our brethren who are in the world are experiencing the same sufferings. Why? Because we are in a world of suffering. We are in a world of hardship. We are in a world of compromise. We are in a world of corruption. We shine like lights in the midst of this crooked and perverse world. Am I preaching yet? We're subject to betrayal, 
poverty, sickness, pain, which one day you will not be subject to, but in this world we are subject. Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation. But I've got a plan to get you out of this world. I've overcome it, says the one that was crucified. Says the one that was beaten. Says the one that was acquainted with sorrows and grief. The only thing worse than living in this world is to leave here without Jesus. Because this is as good as it gets without Jesus. Sickness, pain, poverty, worry, defeat, corruption, compromise, betrayal, hurt. This is as good as it gets without Jesus. You see, man cannot walk into God's glory any more than man can walk into the glory of the sun. You cannot walk into God's glory any more than you can walk into the glory of the sun. It will burn you up. In order to walk into the sun, you must be made of the same material. In order to walk into God's glory, you must be born of God's spirit. To be born, Jesus said, you must be born again. You must be born of the Spirit of God or you will not be able to enter into the glory of God. There is one way. We live in a world of suffering. We live in a world of sin. Take a look outside on this crisp, beautiful, bright day. Sunshine, wonderful here, okay? But you, as I know, in this world, it can be turned into chaos like that. It can be turned into evil in one brief moment. We suddenly hear of public protest, of wars, of school shootings, of of, you know, overcrowded jails, overcrowded hospitals. We see empty churches and empty hearts, and we see homeless and we see helpless, all in this big, beautiful world. If we just look out, when you walk out today, you'll be walking out into this beautiful, bright sunshine that is filled with compromise and corruption and trouble and anguish. And God help us that we do not experience any of it. But if we do, we have an advocate with the Father. We have help. We have angels on assignment. And we have been given abilities, the God-given abilities, that we can break through the enemies of our souls and our mind. The devil wants to destroy us. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Well, that's some good preaching, huh? I saw it so plainly. You see, God created this world as a perfect haven of rest for his children. That's how God created this world. He provided them with every need, and he gave them instructions on you know, how to follow his plan and it would have protected them from sin, sickness, poverty, death. They would have never died if they had just followed God's instructions. The balance of life in the Garden of Eden was blessings. That's all they knew. Blessings, 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 blessings. God expected Adam and Eve to obey him despite the temptation to do otherwise. Hello. God expected Adam and Eve to obey him, to preserve this haven of rest. He trusted them. He gave them authority to rule over all that he had created on the earth. 
But they did not prove trustworthy. It seems simple, doesn't it? Just obey God. When tempted, do you know their pride rose up on the inside of them? And since they owned the right to choose, as we do, they, the silly nuts, chose to disobey God. No one would ever do that, would they? Hello? Come on. You know you wouldn't. Well, at least you guys watching online, you wouldn't. No one would ever disobey God. I mean, they had the instructions. And God expected them to obey, and he set up a great place for them to live everything that they needed, and boom, what happened? Well, uh, they, they opened a door. They chose to disobey him. They opened the door, and they invited an evil spirit to be the ruler of their domain. Come into the kingdom that God has given to us. And we're going to follow you instead of them. And they opened the door to sin, to sickness, to poverty, to defeat, to worry, to compromise, to confusion, to corruption, and said, come in and rule. And the devil became, the, uh, who, who was the prince of darkness, became the god of this world. And he began a campaign of blinding the minds of men and women. He began a campaign of bringing sickness and darkness and defeat and worry and pain and turmoil. And finally, after 905 years, he brought death to Adam. Wow. Well, that was dramatic, wasn't it? Wow. <laughs> Genesis 5 5. Wow. He brought murder. He brought disappointment. He brought pain. He brought all the things that we call suffering into this world and set up his kingdom. And he, and he decided that he would rule and he would reign over the earth. And, and he decided that, that death and darkness and sin and depravity would grow and grow and grow. And since then, it has been growing and growing and growing. And God, in his infinite love and his wisdom and his mercy, he decided to do what he could to help mankind in this ship that was sinking, that was destined, that was on a collision course with destruction. He decided to reach into the lives of men and women, and God created some temporary measures to shield them from the, the burden and from the, 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 the wages of sin. But realizing those temporary measures could not hold out because once they left this ship they would no longer be protected and 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 and, and you know what could they do they could not enter into his presence because they were unholy and he was holy they could not come before him no flesh shall enter the presence of god there is only one way and so god in his love, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever would believe in his son would be born again, born of the spirit, but yet left in this world. You see... God intended to save us. And people need to know about it. And like he sent his son to tell us about it, he left us here to share the good news. To impact others because he loves people so much. All who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But, but, you know, Romans 10 continues. How shall 
they know. How shall anyone know unless someone tells them? How can anyone be rescued unless someone is sent to rescue them? Romans 10 says. The evil forces of darkness, the same darkness that first deceived Adam and Eve in the garden, is continuing right now, continuing to capture the minds and the souls of men and women each day. We must not allow this deception to rule over us, but we neither need to allow this deception to rule over our families or our neighbors or our friends or our nations. We have been given abilities. We have been given power. We have been given prayer. We have been given angelic help. We must realize why we are here. We have been saved and called and chosen and equipped and sent to seek and to save the lost. We are also called by God to raise up our team members and to raise up our replacements. Because this earth suit that you have, <laughs> it is corrupt. It's a part of this world. You have suffered pain and hurt. But one day, this earth suit will die. Every person on this planet is going to die in the great collision. Everyone will. But at this moment, we are seeing earth suits live their lives, play out, subject to the perils of this world, which we petition God to heal and to help. Which person in our church who has died has not been prayed for to keep living? We all die. It is appointed unto every person to die. As long as we are in this world of suffering, we will experience some suffering. That's what Jesus said. You know, that's what the whole Bible tells us. Now, I'm not believing God for suffering. I'm believing God to help me out of suffering and through my suffering. Victory in my situation, victory over my situation. But if you think you can change the word of God in John 16, that Jesus said in this world, you will have temptations, testings, trials, tribulations, trouble. And you, you will not be able to change the word of God. He will be with you in your moments of difficulty. As long as we are in this world of suffering, we will experience some suffering along with those that we are sent to rescue. We have been given special protection, angelic protection. We have been given uh, assistance. We request assistance from heaven and are given assistance from God, healings and miracles and signs and wonders. Thank God for that. If prayer works. However, we cannot allow these temporary situations that disappoint us or that make us afraid. We cannot allow them to keep us from doing our job. Resist him steadfast in the faith. We're like a, a fireman running into a burning building looking for those in need. We don't expect the fireman to not get hot. We don't expect the fireman to not be sweating or, or to not stand a, a potential loss of life even. We're like firemen. That's what Jesus was. He was a fireman running into a burning building. You know, the only reason to stay on a sinking ship, you know, you have a life vest. The only reason to stay on a sinking ship is to help people into the lifeboats. We understand the hardships, but we also believe in the cause. We understand the hardships 
that our soldiers and that our first responders face. We understand the hardships, but we believe in the cause. We live in a corrupted world. We understand the difficulties that missionaries face as they go on the mission field. They're giving their lives and enduring hardships and, and going through difficulties and putting up with pain and being misunderstood and jailed and many, many, many martyred. But we also believe in the cause. It is a cause worth our lives. Romans 8, 18 says, you know, that for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. We are born of the Spirit. If you are born again, if you have asked Jesus Christ to become your Lord and Savior, if you have personally made that request, not someone has made it for you, not that you have joined a church, not that you were raised in a good community, but if you have personally, Jesus told Nicodemus, if you have personally asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be your Lord and your Savior, to forgive you of your sins, then you are born again again you are a new creature a new creation you are born of the spirit and you are secure for eternity but you are left in this world why do we suffer we suffer because we're living in a suffering world we're living in a world that is headed for destruction we are on a collision course with death every one of us Let's finish 1 Peter 5 so that we can go outside where it's sunshiny and I can get you out from under this pressure. <laughs> get you out from under this reality and get you into an alternative reality. Something that you can make up to feel better. Okay? 1 Peter 5. Let's continue. Verse 10. You, you remember what it said in verse 8 and 9? The devil's trying to destroy you. Your adversary, resist him steadfast because other people knowing as well that everybody's going through the same thing, okay? Verse 10, but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Remember, we are called to glory and glory will be revealed in us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> glory, we're all of a sudden we are spirits. Uh, he called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while. Would y'all take a magic marker and mark through that please? Because we don't believe that in this church. Oh, it got quiet. Yeah, you don't pull that one out of your promise box, do you? It's Bible. Why would you want to go to a church that didn't preach the Bible? Why would you want to buy into a doctrine that left out the part about suffering? That's like the Jewish nation leaving out the part about he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastised for our peace, and by his stripes we are healed. No, we don't want a suffering Messiah. You know. After that you have suffered a while... May he perfect you by his grace, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Okay. Well, I've got a minute and a half. Ready? If you can write fast, here are the four takeaways. Number one, don't expect to be treated better than Jesus. Number two, never allow your own pain to make you doubt or quit. Number three, find and train your replacement. Because you're not going to last all that long. Okay? Probably within another 110 years, you'll all be gone. Number four, your victory is in your faith. That's what 1 John 5 says. That's what Peter said. Steadfast in the faith. 1 John 5 tells us, this is the victory that overcomes the world. It's even your faith. It's your faith. It's your trust. Trust him. Trust him. 
Trust him in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your suffering, in the midst of your disappointment, in the midst of your trauma and your pain. Because exactly what Hetty Brown said this morning, after you have gone through this, you'll realize and look back, he went through it with you, stood with you. He brought you out. He brought your feet up out of the pit. He, he delivered you from the deep, miry clay. He set your feet up on a rock, and he put a new song in your heart. And the enemies that chased you, you hear them no more. Now it's time to go back into the next burning building. Won't you stand to your feet? I could talk on this subject all day long, but we need to get out in the sunshine. <laughs> I love you guys. Pray for me. I leave tomorrow. Headed to uh, Kenya. We're going to change the lives of some people that God has put on our plate. Specifically some young girls. Do you know we have 12-year-old mothers there in Kenya? We're going to move some of those young ladies that are not yet mothers, eight of them specifically on this trip. We're going to find a house. I've already got them identified. I got a video tour of one of them this morning. We're renting the house, hire a mom. We're going to lay down our rules, our regulations, our expectations. We're going to move. We already got the parents' permission. Some of the parents of 12-year-old girls are only 21, 22. We got the permission to, to move these eight girls into a safe place and get them educated and taught. And, you know, We're starting about uh, four or five small businesses for some of the families you sponsor. You sponsor their children. We're starting small businesses for them. One of them's just, you know, one of them's haircutting. We're, we're buying some hair. Going, and we're, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to teach them. I've already written it out, some small business principles of what they need to do with the money and how they need to make sure that, that, that they could continue their, their, their business by resupplying and, you know, putting all those things together. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, sounds exciting, but it's like running into a burning building. Thank you. Thank you for making that possible and reaching out. We now have approximately 200 children that you are sponsoring. Thank you. Thank you. I can't, I just can't tell you enough thanks because we have but one job on this sinking ship. It's to get people in the lifeboats. To not only save their souls for an eternity in hell, but to help them and to, to, to be saved from the hell of this life. Whether it's in Port Arthur, Beaumont, Nederland, China, Vider, wherever it may be here in our local community, we've, we've reached out here and we've reached out in places like this all around the world. Are you born again? Invite Jesus into your heart. You know, you know how. Just ask him in. And then <laughs> grow up, find and replace yourself. That's what the Great Commission is, you know. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Teaching them. Replace yourself. Teaching them what I've taught you. Amen. Find and train your replacement. Father, Lord, bless us, sir, Lord, and make us a blessing to others, Lord. Jesus, thank you for the salvation, Lord, that you offer. Thank you for allowing us, Lord, to, to remain here on this ship, working for the kingdom, letting our light shine. We make a difference, Lord. We're, we're, we're holding back. The church is holding back the hordes of hell that would be released. We're holding back the chaos that would ensue. We're holding back the book of Revelation from unfolding until we're taken out of the way, Lord, we continue to stand our watch, sir. Lord, bless us and make us a blessing together, singularly, individually, and together. And thank you, Lord, for your plan for us. Thank you for your salvation. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Come for prayer or go in peace, but don't go in peace as God has a plan for your life. And pray.
for me next week. Thanks. This program is brought to you through the faithful support of members and partners of Golden Shrine Church on the Rock. For more information about our church or to find other programming and additional resources, check out our website at www.cotr.com. Join us here next time. And until then, we pray God blesses you to make a living, make a life, and make a difference.